All right, let's get into this. How, how should we start this? Well, I guess we should. Does anyone know that, or, or is it public knowledge that Brendan now basically owns all the flavors? No, I think um, this is the first public announcement, although the rumor's been around. Um, Scott Russell very graciously allowed me to take over the project. And um, I think sometimes when you have a project like that, I've had this in this feeling in my own mind. Um, it's really exciting in the beginning. And then it starts to wear on you as it, the amount of work just becomes higher and more than you can handle at the time, especially when life and real, like the, the real business and uh, the real job you might have gets in your way. Mm -hmm. And some, I, I wouldn't speak for my, I, I um, too bad he wasn't able to come on the call, but Scott had given a huge asset to the DIY community with all the flavors. And I recognized it as some, as I mean, I've, we've been talking since awesome box and before, mm -hmm all these cool projects in the kind of golden era of DIY. And um, I just felt like all the flavors had a lot of potential and it needed a new investment and it needed a little more like a new coordinate coordinating force. And so I wanted to make sure that someone was able to step in and do that. And I had, I didn't really even know that Andrew had already been working on it and had seen some of the back end stuff and, um, another guy, uh, David, that uh, we mentioned, he, there's a couple of guys that have kind of been on the periphery of the ATF project wanting to to lend some help. Mm -hmm. And it was just a matter of um, getting the project restarted a little bit so that we could fix some of the bugs and get some of the features that we were hoping would be there in place and working again. Um, but the whole plan, like the bigger the bigger idea that I have is this is the first phase is to uh, get things stable, get it uh, back up and solid so that people can remember that it's there and that they can, they know that it's not going to disappear. Right. And then we want to build some new features in, and it's a, it's a, it's been a model. Whereas, you know, there's advertisement advertisements and I've actually, I've advertised on all the flavors myself for a long time. And um, that is not the model though is not going to be an advertising based model. So we don't want to just promote page views. We want to make it a really valuable tool with better features so that to be honest, people don't have to make as many page views to get what they're doing done. And you can return to all the flavors, whether you're mixing or you're looking for inspiration. So it's not going to be a, like a, we don't want it to be a drama machine of like people bickering, but we want it to be a place where people can go make their own stuff and interact with others that can give them positive feedback. And ultimately I want to, my interest in that is that since I run a business that makes flavoring, I want to lift this whole industry and not lose a really important asset, like all the flavors where people have a decade worth of recipes and kind of our community knowledge. And so the worst case scenario would be for that to disappear. And uh, unfortunately, I mean, it, it's a costly website to operate and run. Just the, the monthly burn on it with hosting fees is pretty high. And it, I don't yeah. think, is even close to being above the water on that. I mean, it costs a lot more to host than you make off of the advertising. So trying to just, you know, it, it's valuable enough to me that I can just write that off and push forward. And Andrew and David and Scott and other guys in the team already are spun up on what's there. and. I think some of the new things we're going to do will be a slam dunk and everyone's going to really be happy when they see it. I kind of want to detail like the history of all the flavors because I think it's gotten lost over the years. So there's been ELR. There's always been ELR. ELR, ELR has always been like the default once it's kind of grown into something that was bigger than like hot rods calculator or i think there was e-juice me up before then and then you have all like the a, applications you got download them yeah. yeah and which were all great but elr was really where we started to see like a showcase recipe showcase site but it's always been sort of bare bones and i remember scott scott who has a lot of uh programming and developing experience and just a very successful person in general he started building it and he had lots of ideas for it. But one of the coolest ideas he had, he had a working prototype of a scale that was interacting with the calculator and the scale would translate 
the formulas into the calculator. So as you poured stuff in, it would fill up the meter on the calculator. And it was a pretty cool interactive way. And then we just had like a lot of ideas like that and really utilizing that or pushing forward that idea of like, all right, this is like an all-in-one, all-encompassing recipe showcase site for people that really want to show off their recipes and create things and also have a good depository there. It's just over the years, it's kind of slowed down and it's been eating up more and more of, I guess, uh, the Scott's investment and Scott's time. And yeah, I don't think it's ever been in the green. I think it's always been a losing investment. Um, and it's kind of lost its stability. And that's where a lot of people, I think, kind of got frustrated with all the flavors because there was constant times where the site would just not load and then now you can't get into your recipes or like things the images wouldn't load or whatever and then you add on to like there was a bunch of other weird things that didn't work out awesome box was cool but it just never turned out to be anything and awesome box was like a, this sort of like uh how, how would you describe it it was like a flavor delivery curated flavor delivery box every month or yeah, something. like a subscription for a diy subscription sort of yeah you get yeah new releases and uh new flavors and get yeah. to kind of expand your library but uh i think that i mean that was mixing so many different business models too yeah you know one's a tech the, the scale integrated scales are kind of tech oriented model the subscription box is kind of a it's a way of bringing the industry and like people with it together with with retail customers mm -hmm. but a lot of that stuff is hard to hard to operate all at once and yeah um, and he was think, never it, it, it never seemed to be like i'm going to sit down and focus and nail this one out it was always like well now i'm going to try to see if i can let's just try to make a subscription service on here so we could try to make this in the green. Cause I understand wanting to make a profit on this, right? It means you don't want to just be spending money on this constantly. And that always seemed like a, that seemed like the biggest hurdle Scott was facing. It was like very difficult to monetize, but then you had that, you had the awesome box. You had some sort of like point mechanism where the idea was you accumulated points. The more you did certain things like review recipes or review flavorings or post recipes, um and then that would allow uh, that would allow you to review things better i don't, I don't remember exactly how that the, point system yeah, was supposed so to work actually that is something that does work today okay um it, it, you get credits every day uh, most most people don't get many credits so the economy is totally broken right there's a few people like you're you're one of them who is very rich up at the top with a ton <laughs> of credits because you have a bunch of followers. Right. And then there are, the average mixer doesn't have enough credits to upgrade. It, the only thing you can do with it right now is you can put a border around your recipes and okay. change your username. It's not us. It, it, it was never fully baked, you know. Should I spill the beans, Andrew, about the the the, the bottom line, Wayne, here is if, if you wanted to think of what direction we're going to go with it, it's going to be along those lines again uh, there's a lot of features that are that are built in right now that no one really sees them some of those we we might prune and others like the point system will we'll probably improve on and build them out more and try to try to realize some of those things to in order to make the site more useful for the way that people are using it right now all right let me ask both of you let me ask you andrew let me ask you what is like one feature that you really think is missing currently from all the flavors that you're trying to implement the most? It's a tough question because the way we're thinking about it right now is very much what what can we get done on the current site that actually makes sense to do? Okay. And then what do we really want to shoot for the stars for with this the redesign? Yeah. So um, in terms of stuff that I want to try and get done for the current site, one thing I'm working on right now is like recipe folders, a better hierarchical organization yeah. for your, your recipes in terms of, uh, you know, a down the line thing. Brendan, I, uh, I hope you don't mind if I talk about the, you know, like the multi-purpose. Does that make oh, sense? Oh yeah, go for it. No, that's, that's so, a major, uh, major theme to talk about. So, um, one of the things we're trying to do is, uh, and again, this is not something you're going to see in the, in the near future, but. Um, down the line, we'd like you to be able to have a recipe that is is not just an e-liquid recipe, but maybe is right. an aromatherapy recipe or a, a, a like a food stuff recipe, something like that. So the idea of 
separating right now all the flavors takes your flavors that make up a recipe mm -hmm. and it detaches that in the database from nick vg pg right and that's what makes it an e-liquid recipe right with a different set of dilutants you could be making a bunch of different types of preparations and you might need different flavor percentages for the you know like if you're making soda you might need more flavor right. than you would in an e-liquid recipe but we'd like you as the recipe creator to be able to say here's my recipe these are the flavors that i like and then from there spin it off on into all of the the different preparations that make sense for that that profile or you know obviously like tobacco stuff you're not going to be baking with but uh you right know, a, a tobacco scented candle might yeah. be a hell of a thing so so i mean you could use one of your own wayne uh you could create uh another alias of one recipe right for uh tinctures mm -hmm. for instance or for like andrew's saying a candle i mean it could be anything it could be even cotton candy like yeah. I, I as as you kind of explore the kind of world of flavoring you, you realize that there's so many applications that are paint you think of it like our paint colors you can paint on any surface you want mm -hmm. and uh I think if you went and look, look at the mission statement that we put on all the flavors last week mm -hmm. and that kind of captures, I wanted it to be broad and to show the scale of what we want to do at the new V2 of all the flavors will be not just a place for, for people to gather that are doing DIY vapor, but like anyone, it's a place for the, the senses, the art form of taste and smell. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is the purpose is like to, to ex exchange the art form of taste and smell because we essentially have a community of extremely talented people. It'll be like taking a bunch of people that are really good artists, painters on canvas and saying, here, take a, take these colors and put them in a spray can and see what you can do on this wall. Like make a mural. Uh, you could take the same skills and you can apply it to whatever canvas you're working on at the time. And I think this is important because people have in, in the 10 years of, that I've been doing vape stuff, I've seen so many people evolve in what they're doing, what they're creating, starting with one type of formula, you know, say like a high ohm um, flavor style, then to restricted airflow pod devices. And now I talk to people that are doing tinctures. I talk to people that are trying to flavor a milkshake, but they're often using the same raw tools, right. the same food grade flavors. And you know what? So what if you want to make a pair, use paraffin wax and turn it into a candle? Well, if you really like that flavor and that profile you've spent a ton of time on, why not alias it for all kinds of other things? We're kind of, I feel like we're knocking on the door of, of a different level of um, the senses because we have, we're dealing with concentrated flavors in a way that really hasn't been done in history where in most cases, the closest thing would be perfumery. I mean, think of there's a long, long historic um, precedent for for the perfumers guild mm -hmm. and people that kept secret tincture, you know, little little bottles of of um, of secret, secret secret compounds that they would mix together and make beautiful smells. And that's the closest thing that we've got. But now we're broadening that application into so many other things. But we're still using the little the little notes, the little brush strokes of flavoring to express that same art. And that's where like. Yeah, the past, maybe the closest thing was perfumery, but now we can do anything we want and we can share it online. You don't have to go through the, uh, you don't have to go through the, the perfumery and actually smell them all. You can buy the components, try it out yourself and see if you like it. And, and now it's, it's like an actual way you've got both directions of the, the exchange now. I, I do want to ask, cause I, I, I have a request. One of my biggest requests, do you mind if I shoot you guys over a request from someone who utilizes the calculators on a daily basis? Yes. My yeah. request is the, the, the thing that has been lacking on all these e-liquid calculators is a strong discovery system. It's a way that say, I want to see the best strawberry recipes on this site. Let me see them. Or I want to see let me see all of the lemon, uh, the lemon pies from August first, two thousand ten to August first, two thousand eleven. 
Yeah. Can we implement some type of like, uh, I guess, searchable index database that's easily kind of broken down by a by a user? So that is one thing that I'm working on in the redesign um, is coming up with uh, a, a way to use an API yeah. that would allow you to sort of live search across flavors, recipes, mixers, all from one input box, mm -hmm. basically. Um, and then, you know, from that, you would be able to drill down and have a much, yeah, a much more comprehensive ability to filter. Um, one thing that, you know, we, that Scott had worked on and is sort of implemented in all the flavors is the concept of tagging things, right? Yeah. Um, and that, unfortunately, it doesn't, the only people that can tag flavors, there are only maybe five of them and they don't know how to do it because right. I don't really know how to do it properly. And, it, it, you know, we're, we're still learning stuff about some of how this works. So um, then recipes, you can tag your own recipes, but I don't think the database actually persists the data correctly. Mm -hmm. And you can ostensibly you can filter by tags when you're searching, but again, it doesn't. It, it none of the the system is not put together end to end. So yeah, um, yeah. I mean, we would definitely be targeting having a comprehensive, in general, filtering and sorting are two things that we would want to have for every database entity. So flavors, recipes, mixers, yeah. vendors. Um, and then we would just add the, obviously, you know, some filtering is going to be obvious and some filtering is going to be non-obvious. Um, there are useful ways to filter certain types of data. And that's where we, we need to sit down and think about sure. what really makes the most sense to implement for each entity. But yeah. in general, yes, we, I, I, I would expect when we launch this redesign, which again, it's not not happening in the near future but when we do launch the redesign i would expect to have some tagging system that works end to end for at, at least flavors and recipes yeah that would be great yeah that that's my number one want from a from a specifically from like from all the flavors it's that type of system wayne i'll affirm what andrew's saying uh and also in terms of our timeline we are currently working on these things. So Andrew's, uh, I mean, we, we've we've actually uh, started to dig into these features and trying. We're trying to figure out what they will look like, and then kind of backtrace from there to figure out how they'll be implemented. We got a major structural redesign happening so that we can facilitate new features and improvements in the future much more quickly and rapidly. Um, some of the things that Andrew's been working on just right off the bat to bring more stability to the website also are going to help in order to get these features out, fix them, adapt them, make them work really well. So we're, we're taking a big front end investment on the project so that it can, um, it can achieve a lot of these things and then we can refine them too. You know, one thing that is very important for me, um, you, you know, I, I'm a professional software developer. So at, at my day-to-day -day job, it's very important for us to minimize the round trip from something coming in from the product team, uh, a request, like we need the site to be able to do this, that, or the other, and uh, getting us to actually being deployed out in production, you know, users able to use it. Mm -hmm. So one thing I'm trying to minimize uh, moving forward is the amount of time it takes something to first to get into a testing environment and then to get to production. So um, again, this is all behind the scenes, but uh, you know, the goal is going to be that you'll see updates more frequently and whether even, even if, if we move, the, the idea is if we move fast, and break a few things, we can still fix those things faster than we would be able to if we weren't moving fast in the first place. Mm -hmm. I've worked for medical software companies. I've worked in places where my code quality was making life or death decisions. Mm -hmm. This is not that website. So we're going to try and balance balance it appropriately sure. in QA things, of course. But 
we we want to be able to you know make sure that we're when when people are giving me advice in discord now i'm taking that and in sometimes six hours later we've got the update out in production so that's awesome um, yeah so it, it's uh from from my end it's definitely about decreasing that turnaround time and uh you know, making it easy to easy to take a feature that is technically feasible and just get it done and get it out and if people like it great if they don't we'll reform it or make it better or mm-hmm. scrap it so being a lot more responsive than um uh, our next guest here so <laughs> i i i've missed you man i haven't seen you in a long time scott q2 uh, the creator <laughs> of all the flavors the most complained to man in vaping hello scott <laughs> I, uh, I I was sitting here quietly listening to all that smack talk, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> because when you described the whole world, how proper software development is done, you're implying something. <laughs> well, I'm definitely Life not. and death. Life and death. <laughs> no, honestly, I, I, I also am a software developer. Actually, I'm a software manager uh, in real life. But um, this project was not built that way. This project was built. Uh, hey, uh, it'd be neat if this thing did that. Who and then like fifty thousand right. people started showing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I tried to break down the beginnings of all the flavors and how it came to be and how it's what it's spurned into. And uh, if, I, go if ahead. I had known, I would have brought the scale out and shown it because it's still I it's still there. It's still a project that's live on my list. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you still have the fucking the uh, the scale that connects to the app absolutely oh Um, man i mean that was one of the coolest things when i saw that i was like wow i mean obviously it's a very difficult thing to implement but it doesn't really make it like what it doesn't really do anything though you know what i mean (laughs) also we care what color these are right like yeah (laughs) that's our community yeah right so scott scale come in blue and purple though yeah (laughs) so scott um I want to know how how did uh how did this come about like how cuz I remember when we started seeing stability issues from you for, or from the site rather I was like well I understand why like this is not this is not like the only thing that you do you have other stuff that you're into and you were uh it was a specific time point in time where you were extremely busy yeah. so I was like and there I got people asking me like maybe you should take over all the flavors and have someone else kind of work on it and i was thinking about it but it just seemed like too much for me to handle Mm -hmm. so i want to know what was it like leading up to the takeover what was it like when brandon came to you and said let me let me take the reins here well to date all the flavors i don't think has ever really made money um generally it's been something that came out of my pocket every month uh, and that was kind of why you got a bit of that, that sassy service. If yeah. you weren't amusing, go, I don't, can we swear here? I sure, don't, I don't yes, know. you can swear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, insert the swear there, it's a little too late. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I handled the ones that I had time for and I felt actually needed the, the handling. And for the most part, other other things were just going by the, by the wayside. Yeah. Um, and then... PayPal stopped allowing me to receive payments. Right. I know I don't think I ever really talked to the community about this, but that happened and that was the only source of income. And so what I did was I turned everyone free. Everyone who currently had an account got an account. Anyone who didn't have a pro account couldn't get one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was the way I intended to run forward until I figured out some other payment processor. And then I I happened to get an email by Brendan. I mean, that was like that was the it, it was a it was like a two week period, but I was still trying to think of what I was going to do next. And uh, it turns out he'd reached out to me before, maybe more than once. And that's how often I check my all the flavors mail. <laughs> 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 and uh, it seemed like he was talking about a way to keep the community safe, achieve all the goals. Uh, didn't have the problem with losing money every month that I did <laughs> because yeah. uh a, a, he has more of it to spread on the problem, and B, this serves his goals because uh, he wants more people out there making their own flavors. Right. Um, like, it definitely totally- makes sense to service Flavora or the the industry that Flavora resides in than just Scott and your side project. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, Brendan said all the right things on the first call. It was about the fact that, you know, no, we're not going to get rid of all the other vendors. No, we're not going to kick off everybody that posted a picture of a dildo three years ago. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're not going to, uh, you know, he, he's got smart ways to handle those things. And although he's got more liability than everyone else, so right. he's going to have to treat them a little more carefully than everyone else. He still had the right thought process around all that. And it was really a no brainer at that point. I was like, yes, I really should. I have to go talk to my wife for like three days. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I came back, uh, he was still interested. I was still interested. Uh, we all had some Thanksgiving turkey in our bellies. And uh, it was uh, it was time to do it. Um, what it really came down to was uh, I just was hoping that it would become possible somehow for me to come out of all the flavors not in debt over it. Right. <laughs> And uh, Brandon is obviously a businessman because he offered the right amount to make all the flavors basically zero for me. <laughs> That's exactly what you want, I guess, right? You can't ask for much more than that. It was a hobby project, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's presuming my time isn't paid for. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know, everything else. But um, did so you get a Gulfstream? Did you buy a Gulfstream, Scott? <laughs> I do want to say, too. Um, so I don't think Scott gets enough credit for all the flares because it really kicked off like this second generation of recipe showcasing because there just wasn't ELR was just too it's just too crowded it's it, it's it's completely bare bones you know and as great as it is like I see I see what you and Lars have done as almost two different types of projects even though they kind of essentially do the same thing I but, think of it as signal and noise, right? Yeah, and right. So you're always going to get some signal. You're always going to get some noise. All the flavors right now has much more signal than noise. But as it grows, there's going to be more. ELR started with so much noise, they could just never get the signal high enough. Yeah. And I think that's where the challenge will be. Because uh, there was always, I mean, at least in, in the growth of all the flavors, there was always like, well, you have to pay to have some of these like main features. But now that it's just going to be more of a... Uh, it is going to be a free service. There's going to be, I think there's going to be a need for some sort of like way to keep everyone uh, or, or let the, let the uh, cream rise to the top rather, you know, there are some really smart people working on that problem right now. They want to take the credit system further than I ever did. I mean, yeah. invented that and everyone knows how many useless credits they have, but maybe in the future you're going to find a way to actually find, to use them for something. Yeah. Um, well, I always thought it was a great idea. Yeah. I mean, ha having some sort of like point system, because then it yeah. adds like a, it, there's an enticement there as well that I think people yep. like. Yeah. But also, you know, um, Brandon is has has got the pull to get other vendors involved, to get other to get the community, including the people you guys hardly ever get to talk to mm -hmm. uh, interested in actually paying attention to what you guys do. There's a lot of really neat stuff going on out there. And uh, I wish that I had the energy to, to bring it forward, and I didn't. So what I have is just enough energy to help Andrew do the transition. Well, um, I would correct that, Scott. That if people knew all the other things that you're involved in, then they would they'd cut you a little bit of slack. Yeah, we've always, we've always, I mean, I hope most of the users have always respected Q, no matter what his yeah. time has been like that he did sit down and put together the website in the first place. I worked on an open source, you know, uh, imitator for a year and we, we weren't, we had something that was up and running, but not really full featured. Yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, definitely credit to him for, for a lot of, yeah. a huge amount of work in, in the initial years. And then even up till now, like you're saying, you know, he's been helping me figure out how to take things over and, and, that has manifested in you guys not seeing as many error pages and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, you know, yeah definitely. That, yeah, we need to remember it, it, it actually is amazing to watch you because so many of the things that I watch you tackle on a day to day basis are things that have been bugging me for so long. And I've always thought if I just had the energy and the time to tackle that, I know that I could. And then like, I see you ticking off a list and I'm like, Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> that's uh, pretty fucking cool. That's, uh, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. I'm, I'm always, I, I mean, if you ask me in school, would you rather work on your own or in a team? I'd rather work on my own, mm -hmm. but to actually get software made 
you pretty much have to work in a team. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it, and, and that's where I think Brendan is, you know, uh, I've also, I, I really respect the decisions he's made so far to, to b- help, you know, bring, basically bring one of my friends on to help out with this project. And, uh, you know, that we're, we're in sync. We've, we've got the right goals in mind and assuming, you know, we've got the, the technical prowess and everything squared away, which I think we do, then we're in, in a good place to really be innovating here. I do want to say like, I think this is important for the community to know, like this isn't, this wasn't like a hostile takeover. <laughs> this, this wasn't, or, nor even really a buyout. It was really this more was a like, resuscitation, man. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and I think that's really important that the community knows that because, you know, there's been, there's been a lot of like downer stuff in the vaping industry in the recent times. And like, at least a lot of us in DIY, we're really trying to make sure like there is momentum, there is energy here. So people stay excited about making e-liquids, making uh, recipes, you know, being creative in this medium because it is important that preservation needs to be there. And um, it's just a fun little community that we have. So I think it's nice to see like, yeah, this, w- this wasn't like a hostile takeover thing. This is more of like a nice transition into a new future. And we're all blessed that Scott was able to uh start it and then be gracious enough to to allow the transition think, uh, yeah people people think that um there's pride in being a disruptor in some ways well scott's already been the disruptor i'm i'm trying to do the exact opposite i in this case yeah, that's why it's perfect for and that andrew could come on board and that scott's willing to jump in on our slack channel and tell everyone how to you know how to take it over yeah. Because we're not trying to disrupt it, we're trying to resuscitate it and get get things back to where it it could be. A lot of the roadmap too was already there. It's behind the scenes. No one's ever seen it until now, because it was in Scott's mind already. Mm-hmm. And some of those pathways were following, and uh, it it shouldn't be disruptive. That's the last thing. And from my perspective too, it wouldn't help me either if I was to come in and and. Uh, you know, turn the site into some commercialized zone. Right. Um, our, one of the only reason, and the only reason why we've got advertising on the site right now is just to make it annoying enough that people will create an account. So right. once you create an account, those ads should go away. The ads are only there to, to, uh, to kind of, you know, make it just visually uh, unacceptable until you sign in. And that that's when we want to start. You know, Brandon, you say that, but wait until that first $65 check comes in. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I'm going to, I'll call up Michael Scott at ESIG media and say, Michael, send these to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, all right. I do want to say, I do want to uh, wrap this up with one last thing. So I don't know how much you guys want to talk about it, but I do want to talk about like the 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 end end goal of it because I know me and you were talking about this uh, before Brendan about this idea of how can we figure out a way where people can buy their products off of the calculator? How can we figure out a way where we can utilize all of the facets that Flavor has, that maybe Bull City has, that uh, Flavor Jungle has? How can we sort of like harness that? into something because that would really take this site to a completely different level. Absolutely. That's a great question. I uh, don't, don't have, have to talk about yet. it, but I do want to ask you well, if you want actually, to. Actually, let, let me answer because a lot of that technology already exists. The problem is, is that I didn't have the vendor relationships right. to make that even remotely possible. Yeah. And I remember that like and the awesome the box was the start of that. But then, like, it, it was just you were packaging stuff at your house. Like, that's it's just way too much stuff, you know? Oh, no, no. It, you, you'll see if something is in stock and you view the flavor page, you will find a link that says buy this at Bull City. Yeah. If if those connections are all in place. Right. Problem is, is that the data is hardly ever updated and it's really difficult to get. Mm-hmm. Right. So I had, I had spun up a site about six months ago um, called Fla- Flavor Crawler. And the goal was to provide up-to-date stock information for all all the flavors I could get my hands on. Right. Um, and I actually managed to get blacklisted by Cloudflare um, because I pinged River Supply too many times. Right. 
Um, so that I'll, I'll is... share my scripts with you. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, so I I I I spent I did I did a couple workarounds too and was able to get past some of it, but I want to have you spin up separate instances on Amazon and Google and yeah, use and we'll have those to intermittent tear them yeah. down every every two days or something like that. Yeah, right. Yep. A new IP address. So um, my point being, obviously, now that we've got this connection with Flavora, we actually have an in with these people right and where that before was us scraping off the sides mm -hmm. the little bits of data that we could get now we actually have the, at least the opportunity to make those relationships and potentially you know get actual stock data from those guys via an api or something like that right um so the in, in terms of the midterm solution i think when we launched this redesigned site, um, one of the big features of it will be this sort of long-term thing of Brendan's, the idea that you could sell, you know, sell, sell a one shot of your recipe right from the site. Mm -hmm. Which is the second thing that All the Flavors is really missing is the fact that like not only recognition, but also the ability to be for the creators to actually be involved in, in this benefiting them in some way. Right. right. And like Wayne, you use YouTube and obviously, you know, you're monetizing your videos. Yeah. So what we want is to be able to provide the same sort of experience where a mixer can come, assuming they meet some minimum thresholds of quality. Right. And we can say to them, we're, we'd like to offer you a monetization agreement. Mm -hmm. It's a simple, you know, you sign up. We, we don't, you know, some problems we don't have solved are, we don't know how we pay people, right? Because PayPal is not date friendly anymore. Right. And we may or may not be considered date. So it's it's got a there's a lot to work out, but I think for, from a technical perspective, we're starting to get the artifacts that we need in order to be able to realize that vision of post a recipe, check a box, and be able to order a one shot of it right from the site how short are we on time wayne no go ahead as, as much okay, as you need. I, I don't get i don't get your audience very much anymore sure. so there's two things number one i wanted to ask what you guys thought of of this <laughs> <laughs> indiana jones <laughs> I, I, I think it's pretty good I, your background uh, thing is cutting out the Yeah, the I know, but I'm trying to avoid you seeing all the junk that's behind me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's number one. Yes, yeah, beautiful. And, uh, <laughs> honestly, send me some mail. Uh, and then the other, oh, actually, hey, I don't, that was the best part. I, the second thing I want to mention was how much better my life is now that <laughs> all those pricks don't have an email address that goes to me anymore. Like, <laughs> Scott at all the flavors dot com. I don't even know where that goes. <laughs> yeah, I don't that think go it goes anywhere. It might not go anywhere right now. Keep mailing, you <laughs> jerks. <laughs> I guess customer service was is is going to have to be someone's going to have to yeah, be delegated that, that. So that's actually something we've had some technical problems getting, like selecting a new email provider. Yeah, but I think we made the decisions we need to make there. So. I should be taking over the support email in in the next couple of days. Do you guys have any other uh, anything else that you wanted to that maybe we missed or something that you think is important we touch on? Send send feedback. I know that uh, there's a couple black holes, so some of it might bounce or uh, or not get picked up in the next couple of days. But this post, I'll give you I, I'll give you Brendan's number. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> send me a text. <laughs> Anytime. Well, I would say the I, best place to go. I mean, you can go to the DIY Ejus Discord. That's probably a great place, right? To drop some yes. feedback. Yeah, totally. we, we have a channel there for all the flavors. So yeah, I'm I'm paying attention. To I'll that. put a link, uh, an invite link. If I if I if I have that ability, I'll put that in the description of the video. Yeah, I Bane took one. mine away. Oh, did I? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't even know you existed on Discord. After a while, I, I thought you. I laughed. can see you did a huge cleanup of all the channels, and I'm not oh, surprised. Yeah. I went in them, but you know, it still hurts. Uh, I'll I'm put it back. I'll put a three dollars a month. I'll put a free uh, here, free Q2 uh, channel in there just for you. Get them back all on you all the time. Yeah, and it's just it'll just be a Q conspiracy uh, place.
Oh my god. Yeah, get yourself banned by Discord. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I had not made that connection once in this whole period and now I hate it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I apologize. But yeah, I would say that the It is not me. <laughs> I would say, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Well shit. now all of a sudden after Biden gets inaugurated, now you appear. Interesting. Okay. Mm. Uh but yeah, I'll put a uh links to to where you guys can like just get updates and get give feedback because that's uh i mean that's how we made all the flavors into something that it was it was like just constant hey scott try this out you know and um it became pretty cool and i I definitely i i'm as as i get deeper into the redesign i'm going to be trying to limit the major feature work i do on the current site yeah but uh for for the next few weeks at least i there are little if if someone shoots me a, a well thought out argument, then sure. you know, I yeah, it definitely would be something that I can if it's something I can get done, then I'll take care of it. So awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on. This was really, really fun. It's great to see all of you guys as well. Always a blast. Thank you, Scott, for coming on. It's great seeing you, buddy. Brandon, thank you for hopping on. Andrew, you're doing great work. I'm excited to see like that the that that if we can get there, like that crazy stage where it's like we're starting to implement like real monetization because I think that will really kind of, it'll just take it to something else. You know what I mean? Rather than just like this forum, it kind of, kind of like a forum. It'll just take it to like, oh, this is a platform where people can right. go and like and make money. A platform and, is absolutely the yeah. word for it because, you know, the idea was with with all the flavors as a, a paid, you know, app, it, it was able to elevate Q. Right. And that's that, you know, that's great. Like we want to have the people who are maintaining the community elevated and, you know, recognized for their efforts. Mm-hmm. But having if we can move this to something where it's a platform, we can elevate everyone else that way. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to get to. I think that's really where Brendan's trying to get to. And that's why I'm so happy about working on this project is because I think we're going to be able to make it happen. All right, guys. I appreciate you guys coming on. This was awesome. We'll talk again Thanks soon. Thanks, Wayne. No problem. Yeah, thank you very much. This was great. We'll talk again soon. We'll keep everyone updated, and here's to the future. This was cool. All right. If you, right if you, if you can get in contact, tell me what the hat. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, there we go. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye, guys. Right, talk to you guys Bye, later. guys. So hopefully you liked that video. If you did, make sure you press the subscribe button so you stay updated on new uploads and press that little bell icon so you also get updated when I go live. And also check out this video here and you can check out this video here. And also don't forget to head to the website DIYordivaping.com to stay updated on everything there is to know about DIY e-liquid mixing.